I'm Dylan Cooper, and until recently, life was pretty good. Grace and I have been married for nearly 27 years. At 53, we've seen our daughter, Alice, grow up and start a family of her own with her husband, Ivan. They've just celebrated their third anniversary and are eagerly awaiting the arrival of their first child. Let me give you a quick glimpse into our history. Grace and I met in college, but our relationship didn't get serious until later. Despite being focused on our studies, once we started dating, things just clicked. We tied the knot after 19 months, and soon after, Alice joined our lives, becoming a remarkable and intelligent daughter. Both Grace and I have steady careers. Grace has been teaching for 24 years, while I've spent the last three decades working in the finance department of a prominent company that specializes in government projects. My role involves managing expenses and ensuring compliance with government regulations, overseeing a team of four employees. Our story picks up in the summer, during Grace's break from work. Once a month, my wife gathers with three or four close friends for dinner, sometimes at someone's home. These gatherings are mainly for enjoyment, though occasionally they might head to a bar for music and dancing. I've never probed into the details, as my wife doesn't typically stay out late or indulge excessively. This tradition began around 2.5 years ago when our daughter moved out. We both adore our daughter deeply, and I had hoped her departure might reignite a spark between us. As we've aged, our intimate life has naturally ebbed, though we still carve out time for weekly dinner dates, either alone or with friends. I had assumed we were content and happy in our relationship, or so I thought. One evening, I returned home after grabbing a quick bite with my friend Christopher, as we often do when our wives have their gatherings. As I approached, I noticed the cars parked outside, so I parked on the corner and walked home. Upon entering through the side door leading to the back porch, I was greeted by boisterous laughter. Assuming they were enjoying a few bottles of wine, I chuckled and overheard Gabriella, one of Grace's close friends, discussing her husband Jacob. She expressed love for him, but mentioned his age and weight. Struggling in the bedroom, Gabriella confessed to using a toy for her own pleasure instead of relying on Jacob, whom she jokingly referred to as Minute Man due to his brief stamina. They all shared a laugh, but my heart went out to Jacob, who had visited our home before and always seemed pleasant, albeit a bit overweight. Gabriella wasn't exactly slender herself. It was surprising to hear her talk like this about her husband, and I couldn't help but sympathize with Jacob. I lingered outside the room, listening to their conversation unfold. Then Evelyn spoke up, sharing an issue her husband, Christopher, had. Despite his desire for intimacy, his size left much to be desired, especially after three kids. There was a collective chuckle, and questions arose about Christopher's size. Evelyn replied that he was about four inches. Gabriella interjected, asking about his size when he's aroused. Evelyn giggled and confirmed it was still small. Gabriella suggested teasingly that they should nickname him Teeny Weeny, which prompted more laughter. She even offered Evelyn her toy any time she needed it. Turning to Evelyn again, Gabriella jestingly asked if Christopher could even find it when it's cold. I stood there, taken aback. Did all women share such intimate details about their husbands? Christopher was a good guy, and I felt sorry for him amidst their laughter. I was grateful that my wife remained silent. At least I had a spouse with some dignity. Then it was Sophia's turn. I didn't know her husband, Kayan, well, but he seemed nice. She mentioned going through menopause and losing interest, while her husband remained eager for intimacy. I enjoy teasing him like a teenage boy, she said with a laugh, describing how he'd get aroused and complain about blue balls. She even gave him the nickname Blue Balls Boy, which elicited laughter from all the women, including my wife. Then my wife decided to join in. Well, ladies, let's face it, she began, we're all married to older men, and they can be pretty pathetic sometimes. Occasionally, my husband comes to bed and starts cuddling me, and he's their hard tool. Feeling a nudge in my back, I couldn't help but find the notion of an old man getting aroused repulsive, especially thinking it's pleasant. And of course, Gabriella had to bring Grace into it. What should we call Dylan? Any ideas for a nickname? She asked, prompting me to stay silent. 
waiting her response. With a chuckle, she suggested, I think Bunner Boy suits him. The room erupted in laughter. I was stunned. After all these years, my wife had never conveyed such sentiments to me. I had never pressured her, and on occasions when she was tired, I simply kissed her and let her be. Had she truly meant it? Or was it just an offhand remark? Reflecting on our history, I remembered how our once regular intimacy became sporadic, particularly during her menopausal phase. Yet, not once did she voice any complaints about me. Standing there, my heart racing, I felt a mix of anger and hurt, unsure of what to do next. Then Gabriella, the ringleader of the group, chimed in suggesting, Hey, me girls can be naughty too. Let's hit up that new club and let some young guys dance with us. If our guys aren't satisfying us, at least we can enjoy a bit of harmless flirting. The others chuckled and agreed it was a splendid idea. I began to wonder what truly transpired during those nights at the bar. Typically, when Grace returned home, she wouldn't be drunk or in the mood for anything other than a quick shower before joining me in bed. I would ask her how her evening was, and she would casually mention if she had danced or not, jokingly remarking that she had something better waiting for her at home. It all sounded like playful banter to me. However, lately, I began to wonder if she was being hit on, although I hadn't noticed anything concrete while lingering outside the door. Inside, they raised their glasses in a toast and agreed that they should go out more often. I watched as they continued to laugh and drink, feeling a sense of disgust. Was this their routine every time they got together? Finally, Sophia spoke up, acknowledging that they had all been married for a while and should appreciate the fact that their husbands were good fathers and providers, despite their flaws. They belonged to them. I hoped that sanity had returned to the conversation, but my hopes were shattered when Gabriella chimed in. She mentioned that their husbands had been good fathers, but sometimes they needed something more. She suggested that it might be fun to try someone younger just once. After Gabriella's comment, there was a heavy silence. As it was getting late, Sophia suggested they go back to talking about their husbands. Sensing my anger, I quickly left through the back door and made my way to my car before anyone else could leave. I knew I needed to calm down before going home. I drove around the area, eventually stopping at a park. Deciding to take a walk to relieve my anger, I couldn't shake off the thoughts of what I had overheard. I used to think all the women were nice and kind, so Clyhar shocked me. Was I really in that bad of shape? I still rode my bike sometimes and sure, I had a few extra pounds, but I was in better shape than any of those women. I wasn't a hunk, but I wasn't out of shape either. They were all a bit overweight, and even though they were attractive, I couldn't imagine lots of young guys chasing after them. As I pondered over it, I wondered, shall I tell their husbands what I heard, or shall I sneak out and catch them the next time they go to a bar? The more I thought about it, the more I realized I still loved Grace, but hearing all that disrespect tonight seriously upset and hurt me. Did she not realize how hurtful it was? How would she feel if I said disrespectful things about her to the husbands? As it got dark, I headed home. When I pulled into the driveway, everyone was gone. I walked in through the back door, and Grace was finishing cleaning up. She turned to me and asked, Hi, sweetheart. How was your day? I looked at her as if she was a stranger. I wanted to confront her, but I just stood there silent. Honey, what's wrong? You look upset, she said, concerned. I just had a tough day, and I'm exhausted. I thought you were having dinner with Christopher. What happened? Christopher's fine. I just had a rough day. I have a headache, so I think I'll take a shower, read a bit, and then go to bed. Grace hurried over and hugged me, but I felt drained and worn out. She kissed me on the cheek, but I instinctively pulled away and left. Do you need anything? Can I help? She asked. No, I'm good, just really worn out, I replied. I took a shower and hopped into bed. Later, she peeked into our bedroom and saw me reading. Honey, if there's anything I can do, just let me know. I love you, she said. I just nodded and then drifted off to sleep after taking some sleeping pills. I remember Grace snuggling up next to me 
but I pretended to be asleep, and eventually she rolled over and went to sleep herself. Saturday morning, I woke up early and decided to go for an early bike ride. Grace was still asleep, so I quietly headed out. This time, I wanted to ride for about an hour. Usually, I only did 40 minutes, but I felt like I needed to build up my stamina. When I got back, Grace was already having breakfast. I was drenched in sweat, so I went to take another shower. Dylan, I'll make you breakfast. What do you want? She called out. I'm going shopping with Alice to look for some maternity clothes. Don't worry about me, I'll just have a bagel and some coffee. Have fun, I replied. When I came downstairs for breakfast, she had already left. I felt a sense of relief that she was gone. Now I could focus more on figuring out what to do. Despite still being angry, I realized I needed to gather more information about those bar visits. One of my assistants, a young guy named Adam, who had been working for me for about four years, might be able to discreetly keep an eye on her. We still had a landline, and I kept considering disconnecting it and relying solely on our cell phones. The idea of monitoring the home phone crossed my mind too. Perhaps I could find a way to track the calls. I spent the entire day going through her emails since she never bothered to hide them. I checked about a year and a half's worth of activity, but nothing seemed suspicious. I kept wondering why she didn't delete old emails. Now, I was glad she hadn't. Around six o'clock, I heard her car pull into the driveway. She came in excitedly, saying they had a great day finding things for our daughter to wear. I was pleased because I love our daughter dearly, and she and her husband could use our help. Grace was talking rapidly, and I just sat there nodding. Finally, she mentioned having leftovers for dinner from the wives' gathering last night. That snapped me back to reality, and I became upset again. I tried not to show it, but she noticed my silence during dinner. Honey, can you tell me what's bothering you? She asked. I'm fine. It's work, and hopefully it will be resolved soon, I replied. She kissed me as I gathered the dishes and began to clean the table. I had learned a long time ago that Grace was a much better cook, but at least I could handle the cleaning up. She had a glass of wine and sat at the table while I tackled the dishes. Grace, are you happy? I ventured. What do you mean? Am I happy? She replied, looking genuinely surprised. Of course, are you? I pressed on. Yes, but sometimes you seem distant. Do you enjoy your time with your friends? I asked, seizing the opportunity. That was my chance to ask, I thought. Yes, I enjoy hanging out with my girlfriends. We have a lot of fun, since we're all about the same age and have similar interests, she answered. When you go out to listen to music, do you dance with other guys? I inquired. Grace looked puzzled for a moment. I've been asked to dance on occasion, and yes, I have. It's innocent, and I never let them get too close, she explained. Are you feeling jealous? Are the guys younger, and do you ever feel a bit excited? I pressed further. Why, Delan? I think you're jealous. You have nothing to worry about, dear, she reassured me. I'm curious because when a group of four or five attractive women are together, they can attract a lot of men. Do you ever dance slow with them when they ask? I continued. What's happening, Dylan? Grace asked, her tone now more curious. You know, never let someone else get that close, she responded firmly. Do the other women also dance? If one of them ever did something you thought was inappropriate, would you tell me? I pose another question. Grace gave me a strange look and replied, Dylan, I don't think any of the ladies would do anything wrong. You know them all. They'd never do that. I pondered for a moment and suggested, I have an idea. Why don't we have a cookout and invite them and their husbands? Grace just shrugged and said, I bet all of them are busy with their summers. Okay. I persisted. I was just asking. When will you ladies get together again? She frowned and said, Dylan, I wanted to talk to you about that. Gabriella has a place at the lake, and she thought we could all go next weekend. Gabriella meant just the wives. You guys are always too busy. I turned and looked at her. When were you going to tell me? I asked. I meant to mention it last night, 
but you weren't feeling well. When are you leaving? We're planning to leave Friday morning and come back on Monday evening because of July 5th. We usually have a neighborhood block party on. Will you miss the party? She inquired. No, I'll be back in time for the fireworks. You'll miss all the other activities. We usually have Alice and Ethan over too. I expressed my disappointment. Grace noticed my reaction and said, Dylan, I'll make it up to you when I get back. Sometimes us girls just need a break. I get it. Then I headed to my office, thinking to myself. She hardly ever goes away, and now she's leaving. Right after I heard all those comments from the girls about needing something extra, this isn't good, and I started wondering what's really going on later. Grace came into the office. Dylan, you're not upset with me, are you? She asked. No, I just wish you'd tell me these things. By the way, who's going? Gabriella, Evelyn, Sophia, and Nancy works with Gabriella and is a good friend of hers. I didn't know Nancy, but wanted to learn more about her. Is Nancy the same age, and is she married? I inquired. I think she's close to our age, but she's divorced, Grace replied. That's great. My wife wants to run off for a few days to party with some women, and I have no clue what's happening on news. It seems like all of a sudden you want to spend more time with your friends. I was hoping we could spend some time together, especially since I'm off on Monday too, I expressed gently. That's sweet, Dylan, but this is the only time we can all get together as a group. I promise we can do more things together before the summer is over, Grace reassured me. As the week went by, I could sense my wife's excitement about her upcoming trip. However, I was still upset. I decided to make one more attempt and gauge her reaction. Honey, what about joining you Friday night and leaving Monday morning? You'll still have some time away from the husbands, but we can spend time together too, I proposed. Dylan, for goodness sake, what's gotten into you? We just want some girls only time, she responded, sounding exasperated. Okay, you win have your time, but you know I'll hate it, I conceded. When I want to go away with the guys for a golf weekend and I never go, that's because it's too expensive, and I don't like being alone. Please, honey, try to understand, I pleaded. You're acting like a child, she retorted. Well, that was my last attempt. Maybe she was right. The girls needed some time alone. While I'd never been bothered before, it made me more concerned because of the conversation I overheard. I decided to try and find out more. While she was in the shower, I seized the opportunity to grab her cell phone and attempted to unlock it. It was protected, which struck me as unusual since she had never locked it before. I had to devise a plan, considering our phones were nearly identical. Leaving mine behind, I took hers to work with me. Adam, our IT expert, was available so I approached him and asked if he could assist me in accessing her phone. He worked on it diligently as I provided him with all the possible passwords. Finally, he managed to crack the code and the phone unlocked. I began scouring through her texts, hoping to unearth something useful. Most of the messages were from her friends, but amidst them, I discovered a truth of information. Adam aided me in linking her texts to my home email, for which I expressed my gratitude and he was glad to be of help. It became apparent that Gabriella was the one spearheading the group's plans. They were organizing a trip to her cabin, with Nancy taking charge of the event planning. The more I delved into the correspondence, the more incensed I became. My wife appeared exceedingly enthusiastic about the upcoming excursion. Only Evelyn expressed reservations, cautioning that if the husbands discovered their plans, they would be furious. However, Gabriella dismissed her concerns, insisting that it would be harmless fun as long as nobody found out. My wife concurred, and Sophia chimed in, expressing her excitement. I continued to monitor as many emails as possible. When I returned home, my wife confronted me, asking if I had accidentally picked up her phone. I admitted to it, and she flushed red with anger, demanding to know why I had violated her privacy. Damn you, Dylan, she spat out angrily. I stared at her, feeling like she'd lost her mind. I realized it was your phone, and since you recently locked it, I couldn't read your messages. 
It seems like you're hiding something. What's going on, Brace? I questioned, my concern growing. Nothing. I just don't like it when you invade my privacy, she retorted defensively. Grace, you have something to hide. I pressed, my suspicion lingering. Of course not, she replied curtly. I had a restless night on Tuesday, tossing and turning with worry. Finally, I made up my mind to call my daughter and see if she knew anything. My wife and Alice talked almost every day. I dialed her number and asked if her mom mentioned her upcoming trip. Alice confirmed and sounded excited. I probed for more details, sensing something was amiss. Is everything okay? I inquired. Yeah, everything's good. She just seems a bit different. Maybe it's because of the baby coming. She's really excited about it. Alice reassured me. You're right, sweetheart. We can't wait for that, I replied, trying to mask my concern. When Grace came home, she could sense my unease. Honey, you know I love you, right? This trip is just a simple getaway, and I'll be thrilled to see you when I get back on Monday, she said softly, trying to reassure me. I forced a smile and replied, I hope so. Thursday morning, I was up early and headed to work, my mind still clouded with doubt. I decided to check her texts, hoping to find some clarity. Gabriella kept building excitement about the trip to the girls, but she remained tight-lipped about their plans. It became evident that Nancy was the one orchestrating everything. I approached Adam once again and presented him with some emails, hoping to uncover more information. Who's this Nancy? Adam inquired, studying the email closely. I'm not sure, someone who works with Gabriella, I responded. His face suddenly lit up with a big smile. She's my sister, he revealed. Adam explained that Nancy recently organized a bachelorette party for a friend and mentioned that a co-worker wanted to arrange a dancer for the occasion. Nancy had offered to assist, although the details were vague. Her friend just said it was a girl's weekend, Adam explained. Seeing my apprehensive expression, Adam reassured me, Delen, don't worry. I'll find out for you now. Suddenly, everything clicked into place, and it all made sense. It dawned on me that my wife was planning to have a dancer at the gathering, and I needed to ascertain how far things would escalate. Going to a strip club was one thing, but private party was another matter entirely. I continued delving into Grace's texts and emails, determined to uncover the truth. The tension mounted as I stumbled upon a text from Gabriella. Tell Bunner Boy that after this weekend he better behave, or we won't need him if he doesn't shape up. It read, That message ignited a fury within me, and I felt on the verge of losing control. Urgently, I began devising a plan. After lunch, Alice called and mentioned that she had spoken to her mom, Grace. She relayed Grace's explanation that she just needed a break. Alice inquired why this weekend was so important that Grace would skip the family 5th of July celebration. Grace reassured her daughter, explaining that she needed some time with her friends and urged Alice not to worry. Alice also expressed concern about my mood, suggesting that Grace should be around more. However, her mom insisted that she needed this break and promised to make it up to me. When Grace returned on Thursday, I decided to reach out to all the husbands. First, I called Christopher and asked if he had noticed anything unusual with Evelyn lately. He mentioned that she seemed quiet and a bit worried, but he attributed it to her not feeling well and being excited about the upcoming weekend. Later, Adam got back to me after speaking with his sister Nancy. She had been in touch with a dancer who had performed at a party, the same dancer hired by Gabriella. Armed with this information, I called the husbands and arranged for them to meet at my house on Friday night without informing their wives. However, Jacob and Kayan, not knowing me as well, preferred to relax at home alone. I emphasized the importance of understanding their wives' plans for the sake of their marriages, and eventually they all agreed to join. I also suggested they discreetly check their wives' emails or texts to gather more information. However, most of them expressed difficulty in accessing their wives' cell phones. On Friday morning, I rose at 6.15, finding Grace still asleep. Curiosity peaked. I checked her suitcases to see what she had packed. Rifling through them, 
everything appeared normal. Meanwhile, I continued to monitor her emails and texts. Gabriella seemed thrilled about what Nancy had arranged, but kept the details under wraps from the others. Grace was scheduled to depart at 8.40. Despite the trip being only about 2.5 hours away, they aimed for an early start to bask in the sun as soon as possible. Without her knowledge, I decided to take the day off. While having breakfast, I heard the shower running. Normally, I would leave around 8.15, but today was different. I opted to depart early, leaving a note explaining that I had an early meeting. Dear Grace, I hope you have a fantastic time with your friends. Lately, I've noticed you've been unhappy, and I can't help but wonder if I'm the cause since you've seemed distant. I'm sorry if I haven't been able to make you happy lately. I wish for us to stay together and reconnect. Recently, I've been feeling rather low, and I've longed to be close to you, as you've always made me feel special. I've loved you for over 27 years, and all I want is for you to find happiness in the future. With love, Dern. As Grace prepared to depart, she grew concerned when Gabriella texted, mentioning she'd pick her up at 8.40. Grace replied, expressing her worry about me. Gabriella, something's wrong with Dern. I'm concerned. I don't think I should leave until I talk to him. Gabriella dismissively responded, Grace, for heaven's sake. Dallin's a grown man. He's probably just sulking about being alone for the weekend. I bet he's just moping around, Grace texted back. This isn't funny, Gabriella. I'm worried he might think something's going on. I haven't been treating him well lately. I need to reach out to him. All right, I'll give Christopher a call and see if he knows anything. He took off early this morning, too. The women were texting each other and realized they couldn't reach any of the husbands. Gabriella texted everyone and ordered them to get ready, saying, We're all heading out for the weekend. No excuses, the guys will be fine. I had been working on a plan for a few days. Now it was up to the men to act. Maybe the wives were right about them being old, overweight, horny and lazy. It wasn't too late to salvage marriages, or at least prevent the wives from ending them. Christopher, Kayan, and Jacob arrived, looking concerned, and I assured them they had reason to be. The reason I brought you all here is because I have reason to believe our wives are planning to break our wedding vows this weekend. I shared the whole story about overhearing their conversations and hacking into my wife's cell phone to find out what they were planning, or at least considering. Jacob, Kayan, and Christopher were furious at what they heard. Then a sudden silence fell over the group. I pitched my plan. We'll rise early on Saturday, head to the cabin, and wait for the visitors to show up to see what goes down. We hashed it out and agreed not to respond to any emails, calls, or texts, leaving the women in the dark. It wouldn't be easy, but we needed to make them suspect something was off. We talked late into the night and planned to reconvene at 10 o'clock in the morning. I had a restless night, constantly checking my phone. My wife had texted me about 30 times initially worried, then getting angry, calling me a spoiled brat for trying to ruin her girl's weekend. I eventually managed to drift off to sleep. Come morning, I called my daughter, who told me mom had called very concerned. Alice mentioned they were inviting me over because mom wanted to jet off with the girls. Grace hung up on her. I checked our bank account, as I often do, since I handle most of the bills. I noticed Grace had withdrawn $1,300 for her trip. That confirmed what she had planned. I filled the guys in the situation and told them to check their accounts. They'd found similar large withdrawals, suggesting the ladies were up to something. Jacob Payan and Christopher felt ashamed and furious about how their wives disrespected them. I cautioned them against getting violent, but advised them to hold on to their frustration until we confronted them. The showdown was set for 9 o'clock, so we needed to be there by 8.30 and keep it under wraps from the girls. Nancy kept me updated after my chat with Adam. Since Gabriella worked with her, she likely thought everything was smooth sailing. Gabriella had approached Nancy seeking a good dancer for a ladies' party, and Nancy knew just the person. I shared this intel with the husbands, who grew even more enraged. Nancy even snapped some photos of the dancer she knew and passed them to Gabriella. She told me Gabriella was practically beside herself with excitement. 
The dancer, in his late twenties, was tall, handsome, and well-built, boasting a sizable package, exactly what Gabriella desired. She even inquired if he'd be up for extra services. Nancy asked, like what? Gabriella mentioned that they were all married to a bunch of old farts and wanted to see what a young hot man could do for four women. As Nancy relayed this to me, I was furious. Nancy informed me that the others did not know, but Gabriella had hinted at something prohibited, and everyone seemed excited about it. The men were angry as we continued our discussion. Thankfully, we managed to put a stop to this, but our relationships with our wives seemed uncertain. I texted Nancy when we were close to ask if everything was arranged. She called me back a few minutes later from outside. Nancy, we really appreciate your help. You've opened our eyes and maybe this will save a marriage or two. I don't know. Dylan, I had an ex-husband who cheated on me. So when Adam mentioned your situation and he knew I worked with Gabriella, I was happy to help. As Gabriella told the others that a dancer was coming. I really want to know the truth, especially how my wife reacted. I could sense Nancy hesitated, but eventually she spoke up. Dylan, I believe your wife is being influenced by Gabriella and allowing herself to be persuaded into doing things she wouldn't normally do. Nancy, please just be honest with me. Did anyone admit to doing anything when they went to the bar? It's hard to say, but they mentioned that some of the guys would kiss them and touch them. But no one had an intimate encounter with your wife. She mentioned that one guy grabbed her hand and placed it on his. Well, you know, and she described it as very big. Then she pulled her hand away and didn't engage further. Do they know what's going to happen later? Gabriella mentioned that if we liked big bobs, you know, just wait until we all see and feel one in action. I have to go. I think I'm speaking to the dancer about what she said and did. Isn't that bad? I hope you realize Gabriella is the one at fault here. Thanks, Nancy. We'd be clueless without you. See you. As I relayed Theresa's message, they grew angry. We were almost at the cabin. We pulled over and I took charge, planning to inform the wives of our decision. I texted Nancy that we'd arrive in 15 minutes. She replied, Okay, they're just finishing dinner. It was 8.30 p.m. The cabin sat on a small hill with a stunning view of the lake. Jacob mentioned it's been his family for three generations. It's rustic but cozy with a breathtaking view. The nearest neighbor is half a mile away. We parked a few hundred yards back on the dirt road and walked up to the cabin. We could hear the women chatting. They must have been enjoying the lake view from the back porch. Jacob quietly opened the front door and we all entered without drawing their attention. The women were deeply engrossed in their conversation, sipping their wine, completely unaware of our presence. Jacob then opened the back door and the conversation abruptly came to a halt. The wives looked stunned, their expressions frozen. Jacob greeted them with a smile, leaving them speechless. Finally, Gabriella broke the silence, her voice filled with disbelief. Jacob, what in the heck are you doing here? This is supposed to be a girl's weekend. Jacob responded, unfazed, before you go anywhere, come inside, everyone. I want you to meet some of my friends, ladies. Allow me to introduce you to Blue Ball's boy, Teeny Weeny Boner Boy. And of course, yours truly, Minuteman. Does that sound about right, my dear witch? He directed his words to his wife, Gabriella, who stood there, stunned and caught off guard. I interjected, Next, please take a seat and try to relax. We have some matters to address. Grace attempted to say something, but I interrupted her, shaking my head. No, Grace, please sit down, I urged, and tears welled up in her eyes. Evelyn appeared as if she had seen a ghost, while Sophia seemed to be in a state of shock. I continued, taking charge of the situation. First, we have some important matters to discuss, and then you will have your chance to express yourselves. I turned to Nancy, addressing her directly, Wow! You must be Nancy. You're absolutely stunning. My wife tells me you're the same age as her. How old are you? Nancy appeared taken aback, hesitating for a moment before answering, I'm 33. I raised an eyebrow and playfully remarked, 
Seems like my wife must be mistaken or perhaps telling a little fib, right, honey? I winked at Grace. The women seemed visibly nervous, especially since it was nearing nine o'clock, and they still believed a dancer was on the way. Some of them glanced at their watches, grown increasingly anxious. Finally, Sophia spoke up, attempting to divert the situation. We're all quite hungry. Let's go out and grab a bite to eat. I chuckled softly, seeing through their ploy. Nice try, Sophia. I believe the dancer is supposed to arrive any minute now, I replied, maintaining control of the unfolding events. The mention of the dancer with the big tool sent a wave of shock through the room. My wife began to cry, and Evelyn was already in tears. Christopher couldn't contain his anger any longer. Evelyn, how could you embarrass me like this in front of our friends and discuss my private matters? He lashed out. I tried to make you happy, but it seems like it wasn't enough. Next, Cain addressed Sophia with a mix of hurt and betrayal. Sophia, I've cared about you for years, but now I feel betrayed, he expressed bitterly. Thanks for sharing our personal life with everyone. I wanted more than just physical intimacy. I wanted you. But not anymore. Go to heck, you cheating witch. Jacob's words cut through the tension like a knife. Gabriella, you're despicable. Much of what's happened is because of your own insecurities, he accused. You've caused a lot of trouble. I used to care about you, but not anymore. After we split up, you can do whatever you want. He added a stinging remark about her appearance. Oh, and by the way, those pants to make your behind look big. If you get any bigger, they should attach ropes to you, and you can be in the Thanksgiving Day Parade eventually. Finally, I addressed Grace, my voice laced with disappointment and hurt. You've crossed a line this time, Grace. You lied and intentionally hurt me just for fun, I said sternly. Don't think you'll miss me in intimate moments in the future, because you won't have the chance to see you or touch me again. It's heartbreaking to think that after 27 years of love, I still found you attractive. Maybe you should return to the bar for the excitement you seem to crave. Just so you're aware, there was no dancer involved. We put an end to that rumor as soon as it surfaced. Don't ask how we knew, but we did. I hope the $1,300 you took from our account helps you find a new place or pursue another fantasy. I'm done. Have a good life. Despite the women's attempts to make amends when they came outside, we weren't interested before we left. As a final act of retribution, we deflated two of Gabriella's tires. She wouldn't be able to get them fixed until after the holiday weekend. Nancy had already left. While we were confronting our wives back at home, we began to move on with our separate lives. My wife continued to call, text and email, but I ignored all of it. In one voicemail I listened to, she apologized, claiming it was all meant as a harmless joke gone wrong. She insisted she would never be unfaithful and expressed her deep love for me, saying she couldn't imagine life without me, but I chose to disregard her messages. Instead, I spent the day with my daughter Alice, and we had a wonderful barbecue. I explained to her that her mom had hired a dancer for a party, and now I couldn't trust her. Alice was shocked and upset, unable to believe her mom would do such a thing. When Grace called her, Alice confronted her about the dancer, to which Grace insisted it was just a prank and that Alice shouldn't have been told anything. We made it back home on July 5th. By then, I had already left to spend time with Alice and Ethan. Later, Grace caught up with us and apologized profusely to me, Alice and Ethan, expressing deep remorse for the chaos she had caused. Alice expressed her disappointment and shock while Ethan joked about needing to hear the story of Grace's college days. Grace broke down in tears, and after enjoying the fireworks with Alice and Ethan, she decided to go home. When I returned, I found that Grace had already gone to bed exhausted. That was fine by me, as I had moved my belongings into Alice's old room and settled in there for the night. The next morning, I left for work early before Grace emerged from her room. Adam asked me about how things went at the office, and I replied that it was tough, but that I was glad we could prevent things from escalating further. He then inquired about the prospects of fixing things with my marriage. 
I hope so, but I'm not entirely sure I still have feelings for that. Grace texted me, asking when I'd be home and mentioning dinner. We really need to have a serious talk, she said. I replied, letting her know I'd be home at the usual time. When I arrived, the house smelled delicious, and I was starving. Grace greeted me and apologized, suggesting we talk after dinner. Sure, I agreed. Dinner was quiet but tasty as always. I really enjoy her cooking. Afterwards, she invited me into the den with dessert and wine, and I felt like she was trying hard to make things right. Grace brought up the weekend. I need to understand why you didn't stop things with the dancer once you found out, she asked. I thought about it, but Gabriella had organized everything, and since it was her cabin, we all felt she was in charge, Grace explained. Can we also talk about the times you've been to the bar? How often have you been touched by other guys and have you touched them back? I haven't touched or been touched by anyone, I insisted. But one of your friends said a guy made you touch his private part. And you said it was big. No way, he might have bumped into me, but I didn't feel or touch anything. I've been thinking a lot lately, and I'm not happy you didn't seem to care when I was hurting, and it's really disrespectful. The way you all talk sounds like you're treating your husbands like clients, not partners you should love. Where did that come from? Do you always talk about us like that? Honey, it's just girl talk. You know, we say things, but it's mostly exaggerated. I know it sounded bad, but we were just being silly after drinking. Imagine if we husbands talked about personal things and made fun of you all, calling any of you overweight. He'd be furious, right? It was rude and disrespectful. I'm really sorry, Delan. It was a mistake, and we shouldn't have done it or planned that weekend. I don't understand why Gabriella wanted to do that. I know why she doesn't respect her husband, and she convinced all of you to do the same. Dylan, I swear, there's no one I've loved more than you. I'll make it right. I promise you mean everything to me. Okay, we'll see, but you've got to show me. I've moved my stuff to Alice's old room. For now, it's all right there. I want you to go to therapy, and don't worry about my excitement. I didn't realize things were so bad in our marriage and that you were so unhappy. It hurts that you don't respect me. Am I really that awful? Honey, I love you. You're not awful. I messed up and took you for granted. I was wrong, and I don't think I need therapy. Here's the thing, you let Gabriella influence you too much, and I'm worried about her impact on all of you. That's why I think therapy would be good. She was surprised, but agreed to do what I asked. I could tell she wasn't fully on board, but I believe she needed it. I offered to go with her if that made it easier, but she had to find someone to help her. Nine months later, all of us husbands agreed with the women on one point. We needed to shape up. So we started going to the gym and motivating each other nonstop. My fitness and energy levels improved, and my daughter even started calling me a hunk. As if that matters at my age, I'm used to myself. Here's the current status. Two of the marriages are seeing a counselor, and one was on the brink of ending. Gabriella and Jacob are nearly divorced. Gabriella moved out to live with her sister in a different state. Most of us were actually relieved. Jacob felt a little sad, but has begun to explore dating again. Honestly, no one missed Gabriella. Sophia and Kayan are undergoing counseling to rebuild their relationship. After the intervention, Sophia is focused on supporting her husband, while Ali has become more assertive to ensure he's not seen as submissive. It looks like they might succeed. As for Evelyn and Christopher, Evelyn was the only one skeptical about their plans. She openly expresses her love and admiration for her husband, boasting about his prowess in the bedroom. I think Christopher has moved past the embarrassment. That brings me to my situation. Grace and I still share the same house, and she's still attending counseling. Technically, we're still married, but my granddaughter, Brittany, has become the new joy in my life. Sometimes Grace seems genuinely remorseful, but it's hard to say for sure. Alice, our daughter, wants me to give her mother another chance, while Grace and I have started to reconnect intimately. I yearn for passion. She insists she needs me and loves me, but only time will tell. I'm starting to feel more confident, 
as some women I've met at the gym have shown interest in me. Friends, post your comments on this story.